Welcome to our fourth major exhibition of ceramics by world-class potter Nick Collins. I hope you enjoyed that little promo video showing you some of the, the work that goes behind uh, setting up an exhibition like this. Let's have a look at some of these fantastic pots. Welcome to our Nick Collins exhibition. So, as we showed you in that film, one of the things that we have tried really hard to do at Goldmark with our potters is to make sure that all the, uh, the boring work, the laborious work of a promotion of getting our uh, beautiful catalogues together, of cataloguing the work and photographing, is all done by us so that the potters can spend time doing what they really enjoy doing, experimenting and playing with clay. We have tried to help potters get into that space where they feel like they can take liberties and, and really work and, and experiment with forms. And Nick Collins is one of those potters who does that best. You might have seen downstairs that fantastic big dish I was next to. And it has a partner here. This is a form that Nick has been working on for the last five or six years. And they are uh, a huge parts. They take almost... Uh, three or four people, uh, grown people, to, to carry them through on boards. These are fired in his kiln in the firebox. That's the space at the front of the kiln where a lot of the firing is started. And it's also the hottest and most dangerous part of the kiln. These are really an example of how Nick is really stretching the boundaries of what you can do with wood firing, of pushing forward and, and trying to find uh, new ways of, of, uh, of expression in clay in, in firings that completely eschew the ideas of efficiency and trying to get as many pots out of the kiln as possible. These would have been sat, stacked on top of one of each other and you can see uh, those different areas where uh, ash has really accumulated on this, uh, on this bottom side here and, and up here and how the different effects of the firing are mirrored in these, in these huge dishes. There's a, a whole universe of different effects going on in here. These are hugely risky pots to work with. They are big, they just about fit in the kiln, they're about at the maximum width uh, that a pot can be. Stacked on top of one, one another with pots on top of them again, there's a huge risk in these pots for, uh, for failure, for uh, pots to fuse and stick together. These are really daring ways of making pots. And it's this kind of uh, approach that Nick brings to wood firing that makes him such a, a wonderful and, and uh, an enjoyable potter and makes these exhibitions such a joy to look around. The exhibition we're walking around here today, Nick's fourth exhibition here at the, at the Goldmark Gallery, represents more than 30 years of working with clay and fire. He now pots from the barn pottery in Dartmoor, in Morton Hampstead, right on the edges of the wilds of the Dartmoor National Park. And in a lot of those pots, like those big dishes that we just saw, people see a kind of rustic ruggedness, kind of uh, rough edges and textures and, and mottled colours that are sort of reflected in the wild landscape around him. He's a very self-sufficient potter. He has built kilns all his life. He's built his own studio his own momentum wheel, which he still uses to this day. But more than just rugged, gnarly pots, Nick is able to uh, get from the fire in his kiln a, a variety of textures, and there are, there are many pots in this exhibition which are quiet, gentle, introspective, not shouty, uh, yet show the same range of effects. Something like one of these little bottles that's been sheltered in the kiln. You can see the ash has been deposited here around these, around the top here and the side here. But the sides have been um, protected largely from the effects of, of the ash. This is not rough and ready and, uh, and, uh, and sort of unpleasant to hold. It's, it's got a, a lovely smooth uh, surface and a, and a sheen to it. In a little pot like this, you can see the whole universe, the whole world of colours that you can get from a wood firing. 
more than just a potter who is working towards the rough textures that you might get in these wonderful textured bowls and dishes. Nick is trying to get the whole range of wood firing out of his kiln. And you can see that in the breadth of the pots here uh, and the, the breadth of shapes from, from light to dark, from uh, loud to, to quiet, from something as sort of wonderfully textured as this tall vase with these ghosts of scallop shells on which it's lain in the kiln and the harsh effects of side stoking and the ash that's changed this tomoka glaze to a wonderful, from this sort of purple colour to a wonderful blue and green and brown colour here, to the orange flushes of clay that's been protected in the kiln. Nick is also one of those potters who, uh, as well as uh, the effects of fire, is really looking for uh, a range of, of shapes and sizes. He's a, a potter who works at scale right from the smallest pots through to the largest pots and that's something that uh, is difficult sometimes to, to accomplish as a potter, to maintain a kind of consistency in your, in your voice uh, from, the, from the smallest pots to the, to the largest and the tallest. You can see that in some of these pots we've got here, these beautiful little bottles and guinomi, especially these little round ones which are uh, something of a favourite of mine in, in Nick's pots. But also as the pots get larger and, and more generous in form, so you can see a couple of beautiful bellamine bottles here. These are some of my absolute favourite in this exhibition. They're a form that Nick has uh, approached and, and, and sort of uh, reinvented a number of times. We've seen them uh, lots of times in his exhibitions. Every time different, every time with a different effect being, uh, being sort of brought out in the, in the, uh, the uh, firing. Uh, and I think some of the bellamine bottles that we've seen in this show are, are some of his absolute best. There's a lovely variation in the surface qualities. There's one up here that's got some beautiful applied decoration to it and the, the streams of ash over this, I think a celadon glaze on this pot, bringing out all kinds of beautiful sort of cream colors and blues. Uh, a far cry from uh, the beautiful sort of peach blushes in some of these pots. And one of my favorite bellamines round the corner here. With these wonderful scallop shells on which it sat and the embers which have fallen on one side, giving this pot two completely different faces. One of the lovely things you get in these scallop shells that are used to stop pots from sticking to each other or to, to sort of sit on, on, uh, on kiln shelves is that uh, depending on how hot they've got and how, whether they've sort of completely fused or not, you can be left with a, an impression like this this shell that's sort of almost completely stuck here, or have just the, the outer edges, depending on which way up the shell was and how it was stuck. And, and I think that's a really lovely effect, the, this sort of difference in the, in the way that they're fused with the pot. And they tell a very sort of varied story of the firing. You can see more of that variety in, in shapes and forms here. We've got the, the typical tall baluster jug and the wonderful round, generous belly on this Devon jug here. Slab bottles along with these little smaller bottles that I showed you earlier. And something that I'd like to, to show, one of the few decorations which Nick applies to his pots before they go in the, in the kiln, because most of what he, what he achieves is sort of in a partnership, a collaboration with the fire. This is one of the few styles of decoration that, that Nick uses uh, directly on his pots, these impressed leaves here. And they work really beautifully, I think, on this lovely pale celadon glaze and also sometimes on the, on the, the darker meath clay that he uses for, for some of his pots. On those uh, sort of uh, extreme ends of the colour spectrum, the dark, uh, dark clay and, and, and this, this lighter slip, uh, lighter glaze even, uh, I think they have a make for a really lovely and quite subtle effect. Nick has been building 
designing and firing kilns for his entire life with clay, really. In 1991, he made his first big Anagana kiln at his powder mills pottery. And that really set him on the path that he's been exploring uh, for the last 20 or 30 years. But even before that, in his early days uh, as a student uh, and before his time at Derby College, he's been experimenting with fire, uh, building with kilns. This is a lifelong dedication to, to wood firing, really. Part of that is understanding the, the real dangers of wood firing, the, the, the likelihood of failure, and understanding the movement of the fire throughout the kiln. Nick's packing of the kiln is vital to that. He works almost with an understanding that some of the pots that he puts in the kiln are going to be sacrificed. They are going to help other pots uh, become more interesting, become more beautiful uh, in uh, helping obscure, divert, uh, block the flame uh, around other pots. Big pots like this, wonderful, uh, this magnificent big jar, uh, are, a real, uh, are real survivors. There are, there are a few that make it out of a, of a firing in one piece. And you can see the extreme effects of Nick's firings, which can last four or five days in excess of 1300 degrees. You see the wonderful shape on this pot has started to really warp and distort and, and sag with the, the intense heat uh, and the atmosphere at the front of his kiln. You can see the wonderful movement of the ash that's been driven onto these pots by the, the path of the flame. And this area, which has been sort of shielded by other pots uh, and shelves around it, contrasting this beautiful orange color with these wonderful dark browns around the pot. And then here, where these scallop shells meet at the bottom here, this beautiful, beautiful, glassy, jewel-like color of the ash that has uh, molten around the bottom of the pot here. That's partly why Nick often fires his pots uh, on their sides, like this one has, because uh, Often the most interesting effects are where that ash is going to run and pool and then sort of freeze into these beautiful glass colours uh, once the firing's over and the kiln is allowed to cool down. If you had all your pots standing straight up, all of those beautiful effects would be at the bottom. So he uh, fires pots on top of each other, uh, standing next to each other on their sides, on their bellies, sometimes even upside down, just so that we can get those, those really beautiful effects so that you can see them on the pot as it's standing up when it comes out of the kiln. People often look at, a, at Nick Collins' work and the, the sort of effects that he manages to get from his firing and think that this is a, a, the result of a lack of control, of a kind of chaos. And while the atmosphere inside his kiln is extremely chaotic, it's extremely violent and, and fickle and changeable, Nick has a really profound understanding of how the fire behaves, how his kilns behave, and uh, there is a kind of dance between him and the kiln, this giant breathing anagama kiln, in trying to coax the effects from it that Nick knows it can achieve. I think he's described it as out of control control. That's a lovely paradox that gets to the heart of what wood firing at this level, at this uh, sort of temperature is like. Nick's firings are very hands-on. There is um, a large crew that helps stoke uh, and fire, but there are also effects that Nick uh, uh, tries to get, which include really knowing what's going on inside the kiln, throwing wood ash directly into the, to the stoke holes, trying to upright pots that might have fallen over when they've been knocked by, by wood during stokings. It's a, a very uh, strange way of working to think of, and something that people who don't know about pots, who are coming to an exhibition like this from an understanding of art um, might not fully understand. You can compare it to making a painting and three quarters of the way through you put a blindfold on. You've got no idea what you're doing all of a sudden. Very limited idea of what's going on the canvas and you've just got to hope that at the end of it your work isn't destroyed. That's a little bit like the dangers, the, um, the risks uh, firing in this way uh, are like. So it's, it, what you see here are not just the, the very best pots of the last three or four years, but they're real survivors from, a, from an environment which Nick is 
uh, sort of struggling always to, to try and uh, uh, coax and, and contain. You can see some of the more the, the beautiful effects on, on some of these pots here. Th these sort of very quiet surfaces of the sort of blushings from, from the fire, uh, from the ash uh, on pots like this jug uh, compared to the um, much sort of thicker uh, uh, sort of uh, textures that you get from the falling ash. I think it really suits this beautiful textured jar here with its lid there. You can also see uh, there's a number of different forms going on here that Nick is always trying to sort of uh, explore and, and, and innovate and experiment with. I really like these lovely hanging vases up here, which are almost like little sort of purses with their flowers that have just been put in up here. These I think we saw in our last exhibition, but this is a, a more recent thing that he's been been experimenting with. As with the kiln, Nick is uh, working in collaboration with his tools, with the, the tools that he has, the materials that he has. So if you see down here, we've got some, uh, these wonderful round textured bowls of his, which are something of a, of a sort of signature form. I've got one at home and they're really beautiful for hot potatoes and, uh, and salads and sort of uh, lovely, rich, generous meals. But there's also some beautiful little guanomi here uh, which really show in miniature, in a kind of miniature uh, encapsulation of um, all the effects that you see on all the pots in this exhibition, from the, the largest right down to the smallest. Nick uses a momentum wheel that he built from a photograph from one that he, he saw as a, as a young man and has been using it for the, for the uh, whole of his potting career. Momentum wheels, kick wheels, are often used by, by Korean and, and Japanese potters and they, that speaks to the sort of some of the, um, the Japanese influence that Nick has, uh, among a great many others. A momentum wheel uh, takes a lot of energy to get going, and it also takes a lot of energy to stop. So often potters that use one are throwing what we call off the hump. You'll have a large uh, mound of clay which can be pulled up and individual pots can be made from the top of it and cut from that mound, and then you can make a second one without having to slow your wheel down rather than trying to start from scratch with every new pot. It's a, a quite an efficient way of working, but it's also one that lends itself to flexibility, to, to freedom and, and, and sort of playing with shapes and, and, and uh, rather than having uniformly uh, shaped, sized and weighted bowls, of having slight little decorations and, and, and differentiations between them. And that's what you can see in these lovely little, uh, these little bowls with their little sort of lilting movements uh, the slight differences in the cadence between the lip and the foot. You can see a number of different effects in these bowls, uh, different glazes. There's a few I can see here with the Tomoku one that we've seen uh, only a few times in this exhibition and, and before. It's something new, I think, that Nick's been exploring. But also um, some of the wonderful effects of the ash. If I pick this bowl up, you can see a beautiful pooling of the ash in here. It's given these wonderful glassy blue and green colours. Nick has described uh, what he does as sort of painting with fire, of understanding how the fire is going to uh, lick and, 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 uh, and, and curve round pots uh, and the, the, the ash that it's going to bring with it, uh, the fly ash through the kiln but also the embers from wood that's been stoked through the sides and, and pooled and, and, uh, and gathered on tops of pots. So really what Nick is working with is a whole palette of colours. Uh, a palette of colours that come from combinations of fire and ash and atmosphere. Uh, one that he's trying to get the most out of in his kiln. And which I think you can see in the, the, the wonderful variety in these pots in just these bowls here, from the, the darkest of the, the sort of red colours uh, in some of these chino glazes, to the wonderful sort of shadowy, dusky effects that you get from heavy ash. We've had a really uh, fantastic reception to this uh, exhibition. We've uh, seen, I think, as of today, um, some 80 or 90 pots have sold. Um, this is one of the first to go, and one of Nick's absolute favourites 
from the show. In this beautiful Tomoku glaze, a large Bellevue bottle that shows all of the, the effects of the, the, the firing, the wonderful movement of ash around this bottle. With any kind of pottery, but especially with the, uh, the more extreme end of wood firing, the kind of uh, space that Nick Collins is operating in and inhabits, there are always going to be failures among the successes. There was a time Nick was going through a number of very different difficult firings. And I think he told the critic, David Whiting, that at one point during one firing uh, with a new kiln that he'd built, they fired for five days and they couldn't reach this last 75 degrees in the kiln. Nick put in a 32-hour shift at the end of the firing, just trying to burn as much fuel as they could to, to try and reach those top temperatures, but they didn't quite make it. And so two or three months' worth of, of work was ruined in a single firing and contributed to the, to the local land drainage in the form of these broken pots. Nick has talked about how his pots are not just stories, they're not just storytellers, they're not just telling the tales of the, the movement of the kiln and their place within it from each firing, but that also in each pot there is something of the maker there, something of the soul of the potter there. I think you can understand that when you understand the kind of risks that are involved in wood firing, that the pain and the struggle as well as the elation from the real successes in pots like we've seen in this show. All of that experience, all of that um, uh, emotion and, um, and knowledge and, and wisdom all contributes to these pots. It's an accretional, an additional thing. And the longer and the more uh, Nick understands his kiln uh, and understands his craft, the more beautiful these fantastic pots are. It's been a real pleasure to show you some of the different forms uh, in this exhibition, some of these wonderful pots that are the result of those years of su success and failures, of uh, a career that's been slowly and, and really beautifully built up. We've seen uh, shapes that we, that we know from Nick, these wonderful tall bottles, which really show off the different varieties of the, the kiln really well. These little small bottles to some very new and, and, and uh, interesting experiments. Things like these little bottles that have been encased in clay. I think these have been inspired by uh, archaeological finds. Nick is a potter who is ceaselessly experimenting with, uh, with what he can get from his kiln, of, of playing with the fire, of really pushing the edges of, of what can be achieved. And I think that's really shown in a fantastic exhibition like this, uh, with this breadth of work. Uh, some of the very best pots that we've, we've seen come from him. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the wonderful pots from this show, that it's been um, a, a, at least a, 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 an enjoyable substitute for being here in, in the actual gallery uh, for the exhibition, uh, for the opening as we would have liked to have had uh, were it not for this very strange uh, time that we're living in. We are open to um, to appointments, to people coming in if they want to come and see these beautiful pots and, and, and please do, please get in touch with us. Uh, we're available at pots at goldmarkart.com. Uh, do write in and ask if you want to see any pictures of the, the work that you've seen here today or if you want to come and have a look around the exhibition yourself. There is such a variety of, of, of textures and colours and, and, and forms going on here, it would be impossible for us in this in this uh, walkthrough to, to bring them all to you. But I hope we've showcased some of the, the very best pots from this, from this wonderful exhibition. There was a time when potters like Nick Collins were known for, for making supposedly brown pots. I hope that we've got to a point now in ceramics where we can really appreciate the, the, the total breadth of what, uh, what is being put on out there. And really Nick's pots have exposed the lie that these are, these are, are brown pots, that the huge range in colours. I've got a little bottle here that I've just spotted on this shelf with this beautiful bead of ash glaze here that's just formed on its own. You can just about make out the trickle here from where it's, from where it's come. But this deep, deep, glassy sort of bottle green colour in total contrast with these creams and oranges and, and browns, the whole range of, of effects that have been brought out on just this little pot. Nick's work is uh, at the sort of extreme ends of a, 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 a spectrum of working, one that really uh, expounds the, the very best uh, in wood firing, that, 
that is uh, searching for, for textures and, and, and surfaces that really couldn't be achieved with, through any other kind of, of, of making. Some of the pots here that we've seen today are the very best from his career, I think. Uh, these wonderful tall bottles. This is one of my favourites. Uh, unfortunately, off to a, to a new home already with this beautiful Tomoko colour that's gone this purple colour and this ash that's come around the side here. I know there are a great many people out there who absolutely love Nick's work, but also I hope that this show and, and this, this short film has introduced Nick's work to, to those who don't know of, of this, uh, this world of, of wood firing and really shown just how fruitful, how wonderfully rich and expressive uh, this kind of pottery making can be. One that really bridges those sort of age-old cliché divides between craft and art and, and function and form and beauty. Nick's work is eminently usable. I have many of his pots at home and I get a profound joy from using them every day. But there is also a real beauty, a real sense of, of, of profound and powerful aesthetic to his, to his work. Really, this is the best of what ceramics should be. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing this show. Do please come here and, and try and see it for yourself. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you.